So today is, uh, and, and how, how RJG can help, uh, we have, typically we teach our DOE for injection molding class as an implant seminar where we come into your facility and we do this as a workshop. We, we come in, it's a, a three-day class. It's got uh, the afternoon of day two and the morning of day three. We spend actually running an experiment on your presses, on your parts, to really help reinforce the concepts, to make sure when we leave that everybody understands how to do this. And we try to get everybody who's involved in the experiment involved in those classes. And it's, and it's a lot of fun when we, when we can do this. We get the quality people, the people who are running the presses, the people who are measuring the parts, the, uh, the, the management who's making decisions. And when we get all these people involved, everybody has a solid understanding of the strategy by the time we leave. We do have a public workshop that uh, d uh, coming up at the end of August up in Traverse City. It's a lovely time of year to be in Traverse City. Um, and and re the real benefit of this class, it's, it's very much hands-on, both in the classroom working with the software as well as out on the press running data. So um, again, today is a really brief overview. Uh, there's, a, there's a whole lot of detail that we haven't gotten into. So for, for those of you who'd like to, to, to talk more, uh, please hang around and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be here for, for the rest of the week. So questions, questions here. Okay, good. The question is how do we decide where to put the sensor in the cavity? What we see is that uh, there's, there's two answers to that. In, in most cases, we find that the end of cavity, the last place to fill, correlates best with overall part quality. And I can't tell you why that's the case, but we see it consistently. Now, if there's a specific feature on the part, say a post or something, then that's the critical dimension. Then we'll put the sensor closest to that feature. That tends to correlate the best. But to overall part quality, shorts, flash, overall dimensions, we consistently see the end of cavity location as the best predictor of part quality. Yep. Okay, so the question is if, if we have a very complicated part, say a big long bumper fascia, uh, and sequential filling and lots of things going on, where's the best location there? And um, there's... Uh, uh, many cases, that type of a part, we've got multiple end of fills. And in some cases, depending on the criticality of the part quality, there, there's, there, there was one, uh, one automotive application we were involved with. It was nine valve-gated hot drops into a uh, dash panel, and we ended up with multiple sensors in different parts of the tool because we knew that okay, this area is going to behave differently from this area. And so if we're going to, and we knew that there was potential for non-fills, dimensional issues in those different areas, and so the, 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 only, the only choice there to really detect part quality consistently was to put multiple sensors in the mold. Oh, uh, okay, so the question is how do we do the correlation in that case? The, um, yes, we can do averaging. The EDART actually does, uh, has uh, several measurements that are based on the average. So uh, what we didn't talk about, we have an autocorrelator tool that does some, some quick correlation checks and will include any measurement that the EDART calculates, compare it with the part dimension so we can see, okay, which measurement does correlate the best? Is it cavity? Is it end of cavity number one, number two, number three, or is it the average? And we get a correlation coefficient that brings the highest correlators up to the top, and then we can focus on those. So, good question. Thank you. Other questions? Hey, Rob. Good to see you. <laughs> Okay, good. The question is, uh, where are we at with uh, the use of mold deflection sensors to detect, detect part quality? And we haven't done a lot with mold deflection. We have uh, so a couple experimental sensors. Uh, what we see is that mold deflection sensor, the, the mold deflection sensor, of course, correlates most directly with part thickness. 
the how much the mold gets blown open. And uh, to, to be honest, we haven't done a whole lot of work there. We've seen a couple of applications where the thickness is very important, where that makes sense. But in a lot of cases, it, that the, the thickness is, uh, is, is, is not nearly as relevant as other. Uh, but it, it's also used, I, I know uh, some customers have looked at, at uh, mold deflection as a, a measurement of average cavity pressure, as a poor man's way of getting an average cavity pressure. The more pressure inside the mold, the more the mold deflects. And, and conceivably, that could be correlated to part quality. But it's tricky. There's some, there's some, some problems that make that less than robust. Questions? Any other questions? So, well, thank you for coming today. And uh, again, feel free to 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 stay after or swing by. 